Hello guys, Croft is here with another alien video. I recently talked about Prometheus draft script that contained various revelations about engineers, the black goo and the deacon and how it all relates to the events in the movie. However, in this video I want to discuss another crucial detail in the script that addresses a question which was boggling fans' minds since the original Alien movie of 1979. Who is the space jockey and why did his ship crash? In the movie Prometheus, when David activates the hologram, he only sees a brief moment of engineers talking to one another and the audience doesn't know what the engineers say. However, in the script there is actually a translation of their dialogue that addresses the space jockey mystery. Before we begin, I wanted to say thank you guys for watching my videos, I really appreciate that. It took me quite a bit of time to find the script and outline all these missing details, so make sure to subscribe if you're not already. You can also check out these alien items that I designed if you really want to support my channel. The script has a bunch of scenes about the space jockey and the location of LV-426, so let's go over every single scene in order. I think it's important to mention that this script is a draft and was written before the studio intervened and possibly cut many of the scenes. The content of the script can also contradict to some elements in Alien Covenant and future Alien films. And the reason is that when Prometheus came out, it received lots of criticism due to the lack of aliens and the shift to engineers. Because of that, Ridley and the studio decided to abandon the original arc of upcoming movies and make corrections to add more screen time with Xenomorphs. However, as you will see in just a moment, they originally intended to connect the story to the first Alien film. With these facts in mind, let's actually read the script. First, I want to point out that the space jockey belongs to the same group of engineers that we saw in Prometheus. I read many theories online discussing that the space jockey or the pilot was way bigger than the engineer in Prometheus and possibly belonged to a different race. However, in the script there is actually a detailed description of engineer's height which is 13 feet without the exterior suit and 15 feet with the suit on which corresponds to the space jockey's height in the original Alien according to AVP Vikia. The real reason that the engineer in Prometheus visually looked smaller is because Ridley used a really tall actor instead of CGI due to his love of practical effects. When the ship Prometheus approaches LV-226, it is mentioned that the gas giant has two other moons which are LV-133 and LV-426 the same moon that the Nostromo visited in the original Alien. This is quite surprising because LV-426 is located in Zeta Reticuli binary star system which doesn't really align with the fact that Holloway says the system that they arrived has a sun, possibly implying that there is only one sun. Interpretation of what he said can be different because he did not explicitly say that there is only one single star. On the top of that, in the movie itself, every time the hologram is turned on, we can see a binary star system in the center. The reason might be that it represents the current location of the juggernaut, which proves that they are indeed in the binary star system. So it makes sense that LV-426 and LV-226 are moons of the same gas giant. The next detail is the dialogue between David and Wayland in which we learn that his team picked up a signal from another moon. David, has any of the crew found out about the signal my team picked up from the nearby moon? No sir, I made sure of it. If I may, what is the signal in question anyway sir? We believe it may be an alien transmission, with the proof that these engineers were here, then that pretty much proves it. If we find nothing here of value to me, then that will be our next point of interest. Looks like they're talking about LV-426 and the signal originating from there, the same one that the Nostromo picked up in the original Alien. Wayland intended to visit LV-426 next, but as we know, things didn't turn out well for him. 
finally, let's actually talk about the most important part of the script that explains what exactly happened to the space jockey. David walks around the platform to the ship controls and the throne-like chair. He examines the controls and touches one of the many buttons. The chair suddenly moves on its own and David sits on it. He smiles. Three holographic engineers without helmets enter the orrery, walk up on the platform and start speaking to one another. Is everything in place? Yes, check the hibernation status. David quickly gets out of the chair as the second engineer sits on it and turns to face the controls, picks up a flute-like instrument and plays a tune which activates the controls. The giant then begins touching buttons. The first engineer walks over and kneels down over the second engineer and they speak to each other. David stands next to them, listening. Is everything ready for a journey to Eden? Yes, there is another thing. One of our vessels that left had a malfunction. The vessel was settled down on the next moon. We have placed it on quarantine. What happened? While checking Cargo 2, he was attacked by the planet Cedars and thought not to tell anyone. He shall give birth to a cedar within the next hour. Nothing we can do for him now, we shall continue our journey to Eden and provoke them with rapture, thus turning it back to Eden once more. This passage pretty much explains that the space jockey departed first to seed Earth with deacons or possibly xenomorphs. As it says in the script, the engineer was attacked by the planet Cedars and gave birth to one of them. It's not really clear who are the planet Cedars. It could be the same creature that attacked engineers in the temple. The engineers on LV-226 had to leave the space jockey to depart to Earth, but they met the same fate as him. In early versions of the script, for 1979 Alien, the eggs were to be located in a separate pyramid structure, which would be found later by the Nostromo crew. The pyramid would contain statues and hieroglyphs depicting the alien reproductive cycle, contrasting the human, alien and space jockey cultures. The pyramid concept was realized in Prometheus, which looked more like a temple, but you can actually find very similar designs in early Geiger works. Cobb, Foss and Geiger each created concept artworks for these sequences, but they were eventually discarded due to budgetary concerns and the need to make the film shorter. Instead, in the movie, the egg room was located inside the juggernaut and was filmed on the same set as the space jockey scene. I'm not sure if Ridley will follow the storyline for the space jockey considering his fascination of artificial intelligence and his recent comments that AI is the future of Alien franchise. There are many theories that in the next one or two Alien films, 20th Century Fox will connect the story to the original Alien. Many people believe that David will become the space jockey after merging his body with xenomorphs that he created in Covenant, thus making a truly perfect organism with biomechanical features. However, there is a big problem with the scenario in which the space jockey ship crashes after the events in Alien Covenant. In the original Alien film, the pilot is fossilized just like the head in Prometheus, and that process takes several thousand years. So the space jockey cannot be David or any other character from the prequels because they would simply not have enough time to turn into a fossil. Now we know who was the derelict pilot, however, the origins of the eggs in the cargo is still a mystery. There is no mention about them in the script and we don't know how they appeared. There exists a theory that pathogen urns eventually turn into eggs using the organic substance underneath them. Another possibility could be that because the ship was filled with so-called cedars, after the crash they spread across the planet. However, without any living hosts to reproduce, they simply died out. But one of the cedars was a queen that created eggs in the cargo so that one day their species could come to life again. I'm sure Damon Lindelof and Ridley had some more original thoughts about engineers and the space jockey. 
but it was definitely left underdeveloped due to the studio's intervenes and somewhat mixed reactions of the fans to Prometheus. Thank you guys for watching, let me know what you think about the origins of alien eggs on LV426 and the reveal who is the space jockey. Check out my merchandise store to get awesome designs and support my channel. I've spent many hours making these designs to combine themes of space, exploration and other themes from Prometheus, so click the link in the description to buy them. Thank you guys again for watching, my name is Croft and I'll see you in the next video.